I broke up with the Avatar. You got off easy. You should have seen Air Temple Island after Tenzin broke up with me. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and welcome to my review of Legend of Korra Book 2, Episode 5, Peacekeepers, or as I like to think of it, The Return of Lin Beifong, or maybe even The Adventures of Nuk Tuk, Man of Action. So Team Avatar makes it to Republic City successfully, but everyone is getting shut down everywhere. The Northern Water Tribe is rioting, and there's even a lot of infighting going on between Korra and Mako. They try to get President Raiko on their side, but it seems like there are no troops to be had anywhere. It's almost like the government has been shut down. Seriously, when that building was on fire, Korra was the only one putting anything out. Where were all the waterbenders at? Don't they have a fire department? Speaking of fires, Korra and Mako, totally done. I felt like everybody kind of felt like this was happening, and their relationship was kind of one of the aspects of the show that I liked the least, just because teenage romance is almost unbearable for anyone but teenagers. Obviously, they'll be reunited again by the end of the season. Obviously, I think that Korra still has a lot to learn about being the Avatar, but I think that by the end, they'll have reconciled. But obviously, there's going to be a period of time when she's on her own. Bark's mojo-enhancing routine was one of the funniest parts of the episode, one of my favorites. I love that he ate the peppers and then hung upside down. I'm totally going to buy some hand shoes for all my friends for Christmas this year. And another really awesome moment was when Mako went to take the picture of the bomber to Lin Beifong. He gave it to the other police officer and he stuck it in his drawer. Underneath all the junk in his drawer, did you see? It looked like a picture of baby Avatar Korra. It was so funny. So he's not a total douche. I also think that that betrayal moment with President Raiko that Mako had was meant to show you that if General Iroh had taken the troops out of Republic City, it would have destabilized the government and somebody else would have used that opportunity to do something really, really bad. So it's not that President Raiko is trying to be an asshole. He's really just trying to keep Republic City stable right now. But how cool is it that Iroh suggested that they talk to the Fire Lord? I think that he's talking about Zuko, even though technically he's the retired Fire Lord. But maybe somebody can correct me on that. The interesting thing is, is that the voice of Iroh, for people who don't know or didn't learn last year, is voiced by Dante Basco, who voiced Zuko in the first Avatar series. Avatar and Korra do that a lot, where they keep actors from the original series on, but they do different voices. And when they have characters that were on the first series that are now older, they use different actors just to give them older voices. Based on the Iroh scene, I feel like Team Avatar is going to be going to the Fire Nation sometime soon, or at least this year if they don't go in the next couple of episodes. So I'm really excited about that. But one of my other favorite moments, though, was obviously that final battle with the Bender Twins and that giant dark spirit. So we had that Eska set up at the beginning of the episode, so obviously it had to pay off at some point. So I thought it was really appropriate that the Bending Twins kind of led into Korra getting eaten by this sea monster. But here's a crazy theory. So a lot of people think that the Bender Twins are not actually people. They're either like one spirit broken into two bodies or they're somehow connected to the dark spirits. But the fact that the dark spirit appeared when they appeared can't be a total coincidence. So obviously I think that there's something going on there. But I did love the fact that Eska kind of made a call out to Bolin. So technically in, in her own crazy person way, her own Azula way, she does love Bolin. So that'll be interesting to see how that gets resolved by the end of the season. Because obviously I'm kind of expecting that the Bender twins will end up switching sides and helping out Korra. But now let's talk about something really big. Supposedly there's going to be a medium bad, not big bad, and obviously not small bad. So a medium bad that is going to be totally surprising when it's revealed to us on the show. It's not going to be the Great Delisle Dark Spirit character. Obviously I'm kind of expecting that to be the big bad. So this medium bad is going to be someone else and it could be Azula. That's right, someone pointed out in the promo trailers for book two that there was an old woman character that looked like it could totally be Azula. She'd be about 80 years old in the events that are going on in Korra right now, and she's still alive as far as we know, and so is Zuko for that matter. So it's totally possible that she could be working on some sort of anti-Avatar plot that's going on that we don't know about yet. That also kind of goes back to the Fire Nation theme that I was talking about earlier too. I think that the Fire Nation is going to play a really big role in the resolution of the civil war going on in the Water Tribe this season. But let me know what you think, and what were your favorite moments? Was it watching Korra get eaten by that giant dark spirit? Obviously the Bender twins ran off, so Korra's got to get out of that dark spirit somehow. But I'm thinking that that's going to lead to her meeting that Grey Delisle dark spirit. But overall, I thought this episode was the best one so far this season. It had the best action, and it had Lin Beifong. I feel like all the best episodes on Korra have Lin Beifong in it. So naturally, if the other episodes didn't have Lin Beifong, then they couldn't have been the best episodes. Obviously, we're still waiting to find out about this dark spirit voiced by Great Delisle, and we need to learn about this new medium bad. So there's still tons of questions, and we haven't made it to the Fire Nation yet. We haven't met Avatar Wan yet, but there are some schedule changes happening in Korra right now. So here is what the next couple of weeks are going to look like for Legend of Korra. So now the episode is airing an hour and a half later than it normally does. It's still on Nick. A lot of people thought it was changing networks, but it's not. 
It's still every week on Nickelodeon, but now it's on at 8.30 instead of 7. Next week, we'll get a new episode. Then they'll take a week off. And on the 18th, we'll get both parts 1 and 2 of Beginnings. That's where Korra meets Avatar Wan. After that, each week will be a new episode until the end of book 2. So in other news, I'm working on a big preview for Star Wars Rebels. That's the new animated series that Disney is making for Disney XD. Be sure to subscribe to get that video. I'll try and post that tomorrow morning. They're going to post a trailer next week, so it's going to be really, really cool. It's from the same people that did The Clone Wars too, but I'll talk about it in that preview video. In the meantime, you can click here to watch all my other Legend of Korra Book 2 videos, and you can click here to get that Star Wars Rebels video. I'll add the annotation as soon as I post the video. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. High fives.